Even though we believe in ghosts or not, we must admit that spontaneous activity and loneliness makes us believe somewhat in their existence. 5,000-year-old tablets discovered in archaeological finds have ghost tales inscribed on them. One such civilization was the ancient Mesopotamian civilization which had ghosts as part of their daily lives. To get a sneak peek into it, let's dig the pages of history to uncover what the ancient Mesopotamians believed about ghosts. The ancient Mesopotamians had sophisticated urban settlements in the region that is now Iraq and Syria. These prehistoric humans recorded various information from accounting records to mythology. Cuneiform is one of the first known writing systems where the scribes pick up clay tablets and engrave these stories on them. These tablets show that the ghosts of the dead were reportedly a powerful force in the Mesopotamian culture that demanded sacrifice and were sometimes the reasons for misfortunes and ill health. The risen spirits of the dead weren't random guests for the ancient Mesopotamians. Instead, while frequently going unnoticed, they made regular appearances. Ghosts were as much a part of the natural world as anything else for some Mesopotamians. Did you know that in the Mesopotamian civilization, cemeteries were rare? It was more possible that the dead family members were buried close to their houses or even within the home. Whenever someone was thought to be infected by these dead spirits, it was believed that it was from one of the family members buried beneath their feet. This closeness also meant that ghosts were a part of a family's everyday routine. Someone would be responsible for caring for the lingering dead in addition to ordinary tasks such as cooking and cleaning. The oldest son usually went out to the burial locations in the house or near the home and made offerings to the dead. If he does not, the departed family member will be lost in the afterlife and might return as angry ghosts to wreak havoc on the family. The Mesopotamians thought that their deceased family members were stuck at the time of their deaths. They did not age after death. The deceased ghosts were served roasted grain or beer produced from cooked grains. It was one of the most popular offerings presented to the deceased in Mesopotamia. It was an old ritual to give roasted grains to the dead. Just like today's roasted snacks we eat today, this snack was tasty even thousands of years ago, even for the dead. If you visit the Indian holy river Ganga, you can see that people offer food to their dead spirits. Ordinarily, a spirit that received the correct offerings would not disturb the living. The normal state of departed souls was to stay in a state of hibernation mode, where bothering the living was simply impossible. In short, the ghost had to behave itself. If they were properly interred, the ghost tended to go into a state of sleep. The ghosts would continue to sleep if a spirit's family performed their obligations and gave their deceased ancestors the proper offerings on time. A few writings and inscriptions show that they used to speak to the spirit sleeping or resting after leaving the world. Ghosts were referenced in charms intended to aid people in falling asleep since the connection between sleep and death was so deep. Dead infants that were restless were chanted spells to go to sleep and stay that way. Babies weren't meant to be wailing and flopping around like their elder ghosts. So these Mesopotamians invoked a spell that presumably allowed their deceased to experience deep and peaceful sleep. Similar spells were chanted to drive away demons and drain an attacking ghost. Urkala, often known as the Realm of No Return, was where old dead Mesopotamians would locate themselves. Some ghosts attempted to flee and return to the living despite the risk of severe punishment if caught. The sun god Shamash punished a fleeing ghost. Shamash would take the ghost's sacrifices and distribute them to the souls of forgotten people. This wasn't the only interpretation of the underworld in Mesopotamia, which had a pretty diversified society. According to Mesopotamian folklore, a drum and drumsticks were presented to the king Gilgamesh, who then carried them to the underworld 
other world. Enkidu, a wild man who was the king's best friend, wanted to get the instruments. On this dangerous expedition, Gilgamesh warned him not to look at him while doing so, but Enkidu did the exact opposite and was imprisoned in the underworld. He was happy that he could meet Enkidu's spirit. During this expedition, Enkidu learns that most spirits in the Urkala were either in agony or left forgotten. So the Mesopotamians buried their loved ones either in their house or in nearby locations to always keep their ghosts and spirit remembered. Another belief of the Mesopotamians was that the stillborn children had a better afterlife. They experience an eternity considerably superior to the one they would live in. They play at a table made of gold and silver decorated with honey and butter to eat. Even though the deceased were meant to be sleeping or hanging out in the gloomy underworld doing their own business on their side of life, a hiccup in the journey might create havoc. A deceased person might return as a ghost for a variety of reasons. One of two things would induce a spirit to resurface. Either their rights had been violated or something was wrong with how they had been buried or died. As their afterlife is disrupted, they cause chaos and torture the living. Eresh Kigal, the queen of the dead who presided over the gloomy afterlife, would effectively give spirits a special pass to visit the realm of the living. The Gidim was the feature of a person that survived death or could travel back to interact with or irritate the living. In general, it was Eresh Kigal's responsibility to keep the dead and living separate. However, expectations were granted to those who faced injustice while living. Sometimes, a determined Gidim ghost would escape the queen, but later they were caught punished and restored to their rightful position among the dead. Even today, the Hindu religion has some ingredients in its mythology. Now, how would the living know a ghost is near them? Many Mesopotamians saw sickness as a surefire indicator of a ghost. As if being unwell wasn't horrible enough, most people believed that the sickness resulted from their misdeeds. That live person had made a mistake, whether deliberate or not, and a ghost or other spirit punished them by inflicting physical suffering. Some ghosts caused the illness, whereas other spirits were contacted for assistance. Usually, the family ancestors were called upon to help in such cases. You might be surprised to hear that in some parts of India, even today, such superstitions are believed. Even though many people in ancient Mesopotamia probably only wished to let the more troublesome ghosts go away or keep the cheerful ones happy, few actively contacted the dead. They believed contacting the ghosts would benefit the living as they had connections to the supernatural and unseen realm. It was quite risky, and the ones who drew these ghost spirits knew what they were doing. Necromancy, the art of communicating with the dead to advance in life, was a well-established practice among the ancient Mesopotamians. It was vital to follow the method precisely because speaking with the dead might place you in a precarious situation. One such cuneiform tablet was found in the archaeological finds which had spells to call the ghost spirits along with the recipe for a special eye ointment worn during the ritual and guidelines to avoid danger. A peaceful afterlife was the most a ghost could aspire to but a turbulent life roaming around was considered a punishment. This usually happened when the gods forgot the ghost spirits or their families had neglected to make the proper sacrifices for the dead. According to the tablet writings, the ancient Mesopotamians believed in many ghosts. Going over the list of spirits that Mesopotamians frequently used, you can say that every chaotic or reckless incident might have made someone a ghost. Occasionally, a ghost might also transform into a wandering spirit as part of a vengeful deed. Quite interesting. If this were the case in today's world, I think most of the dead would be turned into wandering ghosts. These were the fascinating beliefs the ancient Mesopotamians had about ghosts. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, check out other historical videos on our channel. 
Don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't miss out on such interesting topics.